Have you ever wondered why your blood sugars are not staying stable? Even though you're doing all this work, you're eating the same food, doing the same thing, trying to measure everything, and it's just not working. Well, in today's episode, we're going to go over the building blocks of stable blood sugars, which you're not doing that you need to be, and we're going to cover the UEP method that I haven't chatted about in a while that I think you're going to find incredibly helpful. Before that, though, we're going to get into our theme song and then jump to it. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right, so a quick story to get us into uh, the story today. So talking about building blocks, uh, this last Sunday, my wife had to take off for a couple hours and uh, Brooklyn and I got to spend some quality time together, some daddy-daughter time. Those of you who don't know, my daughter's 10 and a half months old, just about 11 months, and uh, she's getting real curious and really mobile. Uh, But while we were hanging out in her play pit, which is a a great area to... uh, to keep her contained, if you will, uh, you know, letting her roam around in there. She brought to me this block and I'll show it to you. I actually got it for those of you who are watching this wooden block here. And I tried to tell her like, oh, what is that? You know, like, oh, it's a block, right? I'm trying to teach her words. She's starting to kind of pick up. It's a really exciting time. Uh, And then I realized as I looked at it, I'm like, okay, yes, it's a block. But I mean, technically, like if she happened to say, the letter J, I'm like, okay, yeah, there's a letter J on there as well. So that that also would have been a correct answer. And then I'm like, well, for being technical here, you know, I'm kind of talking to myself out loud at this point. <laughs> like, well, technically, it's also a cube, right? Technically speaking, it's also a wooden block. You know, like these are all correct answers. I start moving it around and kind of like really analyzing. I'm like, oh, there's a number three on the back. So technically, it's the number three. Like, oh, the number three and the letter J are both blue. So technically, if I said, what is this, she could say blue, and that would also be correct. And I'm just dissecting it, right? I'm like, wow, there's there's a lot of stuff. The more you study something that kind of pops out at you. So at first, yes, it's a block, right? But as we dive in, it's a block, it's wooden, it's the letter J, it's the number three, it's the color blue, you dive deeper, it's the color baby blue, right? Like it's a cube, Um, there's six sides to it. It is, it's got sharp corners that you wouldn't want to fall on. <laughs> There's a lot of different things that this technically is. So if I say, hey, Brooklyn, what is this? There are a multitude of correct answers. And it got me thinking. I was like, first of all, this is going to get real complicated when I ask her what something is and she's right. But I'm like, well, it's also this, <laughs> you know, like multiple meanings of words. English is a hard language, but I digress. The building blocks of diabetes and stable blood sugars. We were actually chatting about this on a recent call. And this this story with my daughter actually reminded me of this lesson learned. See, on a coaching call recently, um, one of our community calls, we have uh, multiple people in there. We were chatting about higher blood sugars in the morning. And this one client came in and was like, I've got high blood sugars in the morning. What do you think it is? Like, how do I fix this? I'm like, well, <laughs> let's dive in, right? Like there's a lot of different things that can go into this. So I start listing them off, you know, asking questions and trying to get to the root of the problem instead of just the top surface level thing, which is high blood sugars, you know, because in most cases, a lot of doctor's appointments, they kind of end at the surface level. And it's like, I have high blood sugars. And they're like, cool, let's add more insulin. Have a great day. <laughs> and they send you on your way. Uh, at least that's what happened to me. And that's why my basal was like double what it needed to be after years of just people adding insulin for high blood sugars. It's not always the solution. And the reason you look at these blocks is that there's multiple different ways to analyze the same exact situation, the same object, right? And for anybody not listening, I'm, I'm holding up a little wooden block. That's why they're not listening, not watching. I hope you're listening. But in this situation, this client had asked me, you know, I've got some high blood sugars. How do I fix this? How do I get rid of it? And uh, through some questioning, this this client quickly started to understand that there's more than just one answer to this, right? High blood sugars in the morning could be on phenomenon, could be feet on the floor, could be Sumoji's effect, depending on the time, could be stress, could be dehydration, could be a lingering effect from fats and proteins, uh, could be incorrect basal, bolus, all sorts of stuff like this is, and that's just a third of the things that we covered in that call. Like diabetes is complicated. Let's just be real about that for a second. There's a lot going on. So when I look at this block and I'm like, okay, there's, 
you know, maybe 10 answers that would be correct. That's nothing. Diabetes, you're like high blood sugars. There's like 50 answers. <laughs> There's so many different things that can happen, which is why you have to know what questions are the right questions to ask in each of these situations. You know, this person says, uh, I've got high blood sugars and I'm asking well, what time, right? What happened before? What is happening now? Uh, what uh what are your settings like you know what's your day looking like and there's so many different pieces to this equation which is why it helps to have an expert on your side obviously to be asking the right questions and guide you through that but to understand all of the different factors is truly the first step so right now we're talking about number one number one of the uep method is understanding if you don't understand what's going on or what the possible factors could be you're not going to get anywhere Right. Similarly with this block, if I wasn't there to teach Brooklyn that this is a block and then, you know, a month from now, teacher, that's the letter J. Matt's probably a couple years away, actually. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. But, you know, uh, blue. Right. Or um, ouch. If I point towards the corner, if I'm not there to teach her these things, she would literally never learn all the different answers that are this one object. Right. She could learn to experience what it causes pain if I step on that part, right? Uh, I can throw this, it's a projectile, but she wouldn't understand the meaning behind all of the different answers. The letter J, the number three, the color blue, the fact this is made of wood, right? It's a cube, it's got six sides, a lot of different answers here. So if you wanna understand diabetes, you have to understand the possible answers, right? If you understand what the answers look like, you can start to isolate which one of the answers is correct for that unique situation. And that's what we break down in those calls is like, all right, of the 50 things it could be, which of them is realistic? And which of them can we start attacking? Can we make an actual game plan for and then start fixing it at its core, right? And find the actual solution, not just a band-aid fix. So instead of calling this a block for her entire life, she's going to learn there's a letter on there, there's a color on there, there's a number on there. Uh, there's a material it's made out of in addition to it being a shape different shapes have different purposes right and you build out your understanding so a uh, kind of a mini lesson within that your journey with type 1 diabetes is not an overnight journey just like this cube is going to take her years to fully understand the letters the numbers the colors the materials the shapes so with you it's going to take time to build out your understanding of diabetes. And that's okay, Like that's how it's supposed to be, right? There's a lot going on. You're essentially taking on the role of a scientist, a mad scientist, albeit because you are your own experiment in this case. But in these circumstances, we are forced to learn all these new aspects of a disease that we didn't ask for, that we didn't deserve, it's too late, like whatever, get over it, right? But now we have to learn about it. And in understanding the factors, it will help you. There's my factor, you hear that? My insulin pump. Uh, I turn my insulin off. There you go. But you have to understand what the factors are. And that's actually a prime example. I turn my insulin off for a very specific reason. Pump is off. That's why it's alerting me. And I'll get into that later, but we'll see if we can wrap this episode up before it alerts again. So first step, understanding. You got to know what's going on under the hood. You got to know what the heck this thing is and all of the possible answers. Because we know the answers to all the possible variants of the question, that client of mine asked, why do I have high blood sugars and how do I fix it? We know to pick which one of those it is, which is going to have a slightly different variation of a plan of attack, right? So we can solve it. So first step, understanding you got to learn everything. Like you got to just dive in head first and start taking apart this whole diabetes thing. Second step though, and this is a large part of Brooklyn's journey right now, is experimentation. She's very curious and she's just throwing things, like literally throwing things against the wall to see what sticks. Uh, spoiler alert, nothing sticks because they're all breakable things. <laughs> it's, we're, we're starting to baby proof the house because she's getting close to, uh, to moving around a heck of a lot more. But with experimenting in diabetes, as with breakable items that are being thrown across the room, diabetes can be dangerous if you're experimenting the wrong way. So you need to have proper guidance, do your research and make sure you're following the right frameworks so that it is safe for you to experiment. And of course, take excellent notes while you're experimenting. An experiment is only worth the data that you pull from it that you can later analyze, right? 
So step one, understand what's going on with your blood sugars so that you can safer experiment with your blood sugars, figure out what's unique to you because we're all a bit different, right? And then from there, once you start to build out this library of understanding, of experimenting, of notes that you can analyze, from there, you're able to input these pieces to predict blood sugars and where they are going so that you can stabilize them in the now. Does that make sense? Like, how cool is that? So real quick, that's the UEP framework that I use with a lot of my clients. There's different frameworks that work with different people, which is why all of our coaching programs are customized, right? Some people, it's the 80-20 blood sugar formula. For other people, it's the UEP frameworks. For other people, it's a deep dive into habits. Like, we might be self-sabotaging, right? But we won't know which one of those is the right fit until I have a chat with you because I have to help you decide which one is the best fit to get you there fastest. But for some people, the UEP framework is going to be the golden nugget. Now across the board, the 80-20 blood sugar formula works for everyone. The UEP method works for everyone, but they work at different levels, right? Like sometimes you might want to start with one versus the other, but understanding, experimenting, and predicting is the big picture. It's the big goal that we're all after, right? So as Brooklyn starts to understand I couldn't do it. Sorry. I think they're a little bit too tight together, the alarms. Uh, as Brooklyn starts to build out her understanding of this, she'll understand how to ask the right questions. If I say, what is this? She'll be like, well, do you mean the letter or do you mean the number, right? Or do you mean the material or do you mean the shape or do you mean, right? And you can start really getting to the core of the issue. With diabetes, you ask, well, why do I have a high blood sugar? And I'm thinking to myself, well, it depends, right? What do you mean? Is it because X, Y, Z or one, two, three? And you can start to pick apart why your blood sugar is doing what they're doing, which yields the ability to start controlling them, keeping them stable and living the life that you love. Does this make sense? So if this makes sense, actually, drop the, the letters U, E, P in the comments below. Uh, and my team will reach out with the training for you. And what I want you guys to understand is that if you're able to start understanding, you don't have to get all of it done. and I'm going to make this clear as well. I don't know everything that there is to know with diabetes. Right? I've had clients call in with really specific questions. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know. And I'm going to be honest about that, right? If I don't know the answer to your question, I'm going to tell you. But I do know a lot. But it's, under, it's important to understand for you that all of us are still playing like a 5% guessing game. There's still research being done on like the gut microbiome. There's so many things that we don't understand yet about the human body. It's ridiculous. But understanding the majority of the pieces is going to allow you to see most of the puzzle and start to get things in place for your experimentation and then eventually for your prediction, right? And of course, for predicting blood sugars, formulas are super helpful for that. So to, to kind of summarize everything, first step, if someone's asking you a question or if you're asking yourself a question about blood sugars, you have to have the understanding the awareness of what are the possible answers, right? High blood sugars, 50 different options. You got to start studying, researching, identifying those. Second step, once you've built out that understanding is to experiment safely. I have to add that in there. Be cautious with this. I've put myself into some dangerous positions over the years, which is why the programs that you put people through are very specific. And we give you exact examples, exact walkthroughs and blueprints on how to do so safely. That is our primary concern, right? And of course, getting to a place where you can predict your blood sugars allows you to live your best life without holding back on food or activity or travel or family or any of these things. That is the end goal where you can mix quality of life with stable blood sugars. And like I said, comment the letters UEP if you want some training specific to that. And of course, as, uh, as necessary, I wanted you to understand that with blood sugars, there is no one size fits all. There is no generic magic diet that's going to fix everybody that's why we're all doing different things and seeing different results right but if you want to develop that deeper understanding and see how the experimentation works we do have a training on that and i want you to listen to my pump continually to sing the song of its people <laughs> just kidding no but we do have a training on understanding and safely experimenting uh specific to your type one diabetes like if you're taking insulin this is for you and ultimately the two people that benefit from this training most are a those who are wildly out of control roller coaster blood sugars and don't know why and are trying to get it under control and b those who have it under control look great on paper 
but they're like, you know what? This is a lot of work. Like it requires that I'm always on top of it, always counting carbs and watching my insulin and always checking my blood sugars every 30 minutes or more. Those two types of people are the ones who benefit the most from the training we just put up. And if you want to find that, you need to go right now to diabetesinaction.com. Go check it out. It's going to ask you to register with your email so we can send you information on it. Uh, and then, of course, watch the free training. Get all of the information you can because the first step is about understanding. All right. So take good notes. Understand it. Try to implement what you can. And if you're looking for extra help, there's a place you can also uh, get some some additional help from us, some guidance and, and even a game plan if that's something you find valuable. All right. So uh, go check it out. Diabetesinaction.com. Implement today. Start building out your understanding, asking the right questions. And of course, if you need help, we're here for you. All right. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Do subscribe if you have net, not yet. We put these videos up weekly and there's trainings all over the internet every single month we put up. And I uh, hope, you're, hope you're able to use them to better your health and better your blood sugars. All right, so have a good one. I'll catch you next week and keep up the fight.